Get softer, smoother, and more even toned skin after just one use with the new Gentle Exfoliating Line from Cetaphil. Formulated with a unique triple acid blend that promotes surface skin cell renewal, these gentle chemical exfoliators remove dead skin cells and refine skin's texture while hydrating, resulting in softer, smoother, more even looking skin. Shop the new Cetaphil Gentle Exfoliating Line in the face and body aisles at your local Target store or online at Cetaphil.com. Feisty, fearless, and fair. She's an Emmy-winning journalist from the White House to war zones, telling all sides of the story. This is the Rita Cosby Show. I know your name is Rita. Cause your perfume is smelling sweet. Since when I saw you down on the floor. It's on. And tonight on the Rita Cosby Show, Well, guess what? We're getting so many details about this guy, Ryan Routh, the 58-year-old would-be assassin there of President Trump in Florida. And the more details we hear, uh, I'm laughing because in a sad way, he had a blaring neon sign saying he's clearly, clearly, uh, you know, demented, clearly a troubled man. He's also a felon. Because he held authorities at bay, and this was years ago. Who knows, how was he able to vote? He was voting, apparently, in North Carolina, uh, which is where he's from. How could you vote? You're not supposed to be voting if you're a convicted felon. And apparently he voted 19 times for Democrats. And yet, the Democrats and many people in the Secret Service, at least the leadership, says, we can't figure out a motive of why he'd hit Trump. Well, guess what? If you look at it, The guy was a blaring sign and all over the place. He was talking about how he hated Trump. People who knew this guy when he went over to Ukraine, he was recruiting fighters. And there's reports that he was pulling them, trying to get some from Afghanistan to come into Ukraine. How is he flying back and forth? There's a lot of questions. That's a lot of travel. Apparently, he had an arsenal with him and he was trying to get black market weapons into Ukraine. That's a scary kind of a person. Why was he on the radar? Why was he allowed to travel? And apparently a Secret Service officer and also, by the way, a CIA officer, more importantly, also in Ukraine, warned the agency about him and said, this guy is trouble. I don't know if they knew anything tied to Trump, but they clearly knew the guy was a very troubled and dangerous individual. There's a nurse who was over there in Ukraine and said she left because she was so scared of this guy and she told a couple different federal governments about it. So why was he able to go all over the place and travel and continue to do things? He had moved to Hawaii, apparently, we're getting word, about six years ago. And then in April 2022, he landed in Ukraine and again went back and forth. And this nurse who said she was so freaked out by him, she described him as a ticking time bomb. So why would this guy be allowed to go all over the place? There's reports he may have had some ties to Iran. That opens the door to a whole bunch of questions. Boy, oh boy. And why are we continuing to hear this despicable rhetoric coming from Democrats? Rhetoric like this. Listen to this. This is from Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett. She represents the at-large congressional district of the U.S., the Virgin Islands, in the House of of representatives. This is what she said not that long ago. Listen to this one. Having Trump not only have had the codes, the classified information for Americans and being able to put that out and share it in his resort with anyone and everyone who comes through should be terrifying to all Americans. Mm -hmm. And he needs to be shot. Stop. He needs to be shot. Oops. I mean, stopped. Uh, Are you kidding me? That kind of rhetoric so easily slips off her tongue and others. No wonder that Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida has come out and said there will be a separate investigation done by the state of Florida because he just doesn't trust, sadly, the Biden administration to investigate or the Secret Service to investigate. We still haven't gotten answers. Uh, At least the House hasn't. uh, The investigating committee on the first Butler rally shooting. They say that they've gotten a lot of... uh, Head scratching and, oh, sorry, we'll get back to you when especially they've asked the FBI for information. That's according to Michael Waltz. He said that to me a couple times. 
So guess what? Here we are now. Fast forward on this one. And they're saying after this dismal display by the Secret Service and others, uh, we'll take the matter into our own hands because they can actually file higher charges by the state, which is really interesting uh, that they can actually go significantly higher by doing that. So that's an interesting point. And thank goodness that Ron DeSantis is there. This is what he had to say. We're going to be doing a state level investigation. I understand uh, that the feds um, are involved, but but we do believe that there were multiple violations of state law. Uh, we also believe that there's a, a need to make sure that that the truth about all this uh, comes out in a way you know that, that's credible. I mean, I, I look at the federal government with all due respect to them. You know, those same agencies that are prosecuting Trump in that jurisdiction are now going to be investigating this. I just think that that may not be the best thing for for this country. Country. Uh, nevertheless, they have their prerogative, but we have our prerogative. And so we'll be making an announcement further along those lines um, in the in the ensuing days. Very interesting. And listen, I do have a lot more faith in Ron DeSantis doing that investigation. By the way, I want to play this for you. We did an interview earlier today on Cats and Cosby on WABC with John Solomon, the great investigative journalist of Just the News. And he had some bombshells. And he said some of the ties that this guy had, uh, at least to be on the radar of whether it's CIA, State Department, uh, Homeland Security, it sounds like the alarm bells were going all over the place. And yet somehow he was able to travel, uh, able to make his way to Florida. And boy, are there more, more unanswered questions tonight. Listen to this. And joining us now here with some big breaking news is John Solomon with Just the News. John, what do you know about the suspected Trump assassin? Well, listen, we know that at least four times since 2019, he was on the radar of federal law enforcement. First in 2019, when a tipster came into the FBI and said he's in possession of weapons, even though he's a previously convicted felon, he was convicted of owning a weapon of mass destruction, a machine gun. Uh, The FBI doesn't follow up. Twice in 2022, a nurse, an American nurse, volunteering to help war-injured veterans and war-injured civilians in Ukraine, raises concerns with the uh, federal law enforcement, saying this gentleman, Brian Ruth, in uh, Ukraine is disturbing to me. He needs to be investigated. There's no apparent follow-up with her. And then now we know from records obtained today by Just the News, that when Ryan Ruth returned from Ukraine after his efforts to recruit foreign fighters to go into Ukraine, yep, Ukraine fights Russia, he was stopped by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency while he was returning to Hawaii, to the Honolulu airport. His comments to the agents made, him, made them suspicious. They did a more detailed interview. In that detailed interview, they learned some dis- disturbing information. They learned that he, uh, he admitted that he had been recruiting as many as 100 foreign fighters from Taiwan, Afghanistan, Moldova, Syria, uh, and, uh, and other locations to maybe go fight for the Ukrainians. Now, that's a red flag for two reasons. What's an American doing in a war zone? What is an American doing contacting both allies, Taiwan, and enemies, Afghanistan? Uh, they are so concerned, they recommend, they open a file, and they recommend that the Homeland Security Department's version of their own FBI, they call it the HSI, the Homeland Security Investigations Unit, that they further investigate Ryan Ruth, given this activity that he admitted to. By the way, he says where he gets his money from. He says it's from his wife. He says that he um, had a, a group that he was operating in Ukraine. They have the name of it. But despite that, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Homeland Security Department, the HSI, they do not act. They decide not. They decline to open up an investigation. The fourth of four opportunities to potentially engage Ryan Ruth, maybe stop him, put him on a different path than the path we found him on Sunday, where he apparently was trying to shoot President Trump. Well, I mean, wow. Yeah, it is a wow. But uh, he actually, I mean, he had to be working for one of the governments that was paying him. Or he was working for some intelligence agency of one of the governments. And I don't I. I don't know which government, I don't know which intelligence agency, uh, but uh, the way you describe it, uh, that is the story. And and, uh, you see this in the movies all the time. (laughs) It does feel like a movie, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it has real life tragic consequences and nearly uh, another assassination. Uh, Listen, this is what I think is very important. There are two big developments in the last 12 hours that probably don't tickle most everyday American ears, but they're very important. The first is a former senior FBI official who did these sort of cases for 20, 30 years in the government, Jeff Danik, 
told me he is certain that the CIA would have a file on this guy, that the activity he was involved in uh, overseas, uh, having contacts with uh, both enemy and favorable nations, trying to get fighters on the ground, that the CIA almost certainly would be monitoring him and his devices, even if he was an American because he was on foreign soil. The second thing came a few hours after that interview I did with Jeff Danik, when the FBI agent in charge of the investigation in Florida, the special agent in charge of the Miami office said, the National Security Division of the Justice Department has joined the investigation and is helping to execute search warrants. Why is that significant? Uh, The National Security Division deals with two things. Foreign powers involved in a potential crime on U.S. soil. If a foreign power was helping or assisting Mr. Roos, we're not saying he did, but they would do that. Or they're the liaison that would execute search warrants and subpoenas from the CIA and U.S. intelligence agencies, get what's in their files and provide that to the FBI, what would be relevant to the FBI. But the, the, uh, um, the uh, involvement of the NSD, the National Security Division of the Justice Department, John, goes right to the issue that you're talking about. There is something that the intelligence committee knows about this guy, whether he was working for them or not. It's almost certain he was. they were monitoring these activities. But again, four times where the FBI and HSI could, could have engaged this guy and found out what he was up to long before uh, this past Sunday. John Solomon. Uh, if the CIA has it, you will never, ever, ever see it. <laughs> yeah, we just still don't have the fi- all the files on Lee Harvey Oswald 60 plus years later. So you're exactly right. You'll never, ever, ever see it. Rita? You know, John, I want to ask you, too, uh, to your point about sort of um, a foreign power. First of all, it's weird. Here's this guy, as you talk about, um, he has this weapon of mass destruction, holds up a business uh, for multiple hours 20 years ago. Uh, he gets yep. access to a gun. He apparently had 100 run-ins in North Carolina. There is something much That's more right. to the story. But I want to also yep. ask you real quick about uh, the fact that that it looks like he knew President Trump was golfing that day when it seems like the yeah, Secret okay. Service was barely aware. Uh, is there more to the story on that? Well, listen, that's exactly what the local sheriff said who arrested him. Uh, is there a conspiracy? How does someone find out about a private golf game that's not public? That is a very important issue. Was it a foreign power? Was it an insider? Was it pure luck? Did he just guess, hey, it's a sunny Sunday, maybe President Trump is going out? We don't know. But that is going to be one of the top questions that the FBI and others are going to try to answer. I think another one that has to be reviewed time and again is the posture that the Secret Service had at that course. Now, this is the new and improved Secret Service, if you believe the Secret Service. They're covering a golf course they don't sweep the golf course they don't have drones up they don't have a dog searching if that gentleman doesn't poke that barrel of the gun out just far enough for the that unbelievable agent to notice that or if it was a more trained assassin we would be having a very different conversation today i want to just tell you something that eli crane former navy seal now arizona congressman told me today he's a trained killer he was sent on assassination missions on behalf of our country He said a trained assassin would have cut a hole in the fence, never let the barrel come out. He wouldn't have had the plates, those uh, ceramic plates to protect him from incoming fire. He would have painted them not white, He would have painted them green to blend into the bush. A real assassin would not have been detected by that Secret Service, and that should concern all of us. That's coming from a real assassin. Uh, It was pure luck and, you know, some skill, obviously, by this one agent. But why is the Secret Service in that weak of a position when they're protecting the president? That's a very troubling question for people of both sides of the political aisle right now. Yeah, absolutely. So many questions. John, keep us posted. There's a lot more to the story. Thank you. And when we come back, everybody, we will take your calls. What a wow interview coming from John Solomon. 1-800-848-9222. And you're listening to The Rita Cosby Show. You're listening to The Rita Cosby Show. Larry Kudlow here with an urgent warning. Washington is coming for your savings to pay for their spending mistakes. That's why thousands of Americans are shielding their savings with gold. For a free 2024 gold guide that explains everything you need to know, please go to colonialmetalsgroup.com slash Kudlow. Or just call 800-621-3908. That's 800-621-3908 for your free gold guide. And learn if you qualify for up to $7,500 hundred bucks in free silver now thursday night football is on and it's only on prime video touchdown tonight the new look new england patriots take on the reloaded new york jets in an intense divisional matchup what a catch coverage begins at 7 p.m eastern with tnf tonight presented by verizon 
Not a Prime member? Sign up for a 30-day free trial to stream the game. It's the Patriots and Jets tonight at 7, only on Prime Video. Restrictions apply. See Amazon.com slash Amazon Prime for details. Hi, and welcome to Ikea. How can I help? Oh, my schedule is crazy. I just want some me time. Maybe it's time to embrace the joy of staying in. With comfortable beds, pillow and decor, mood lighting, and so much more, you can turn your bedroom into the place to be. Oh, sounds like a dream. We've got you. Visit us in-store or at ikea-usa.com slash sleep to create your dream bedroom today. Prime Big Deal Days is coming October 8th and 9th with exclusive savings just for Prime members. Woo-hoo! Involuntary deal squeals can happen, like the deal on new running shoes squeal. The deal on a new blender squeal. Yeah! Or the infamous deal on a new massager squeal. Yeah! Save big on electronics, fashion, and more this Prime Big Deal Days, October 8th and 9th. This is the Rita Cosby Show. And let's go to your calls. 1-800-848-9222. You're listening to the Rita Cosby Show. Let's go to Tony. Uh, Tony, your thoughts. Uh, You just heard that blockbuster interview from John Solomon, too. And it makes you wonder, uh, what's behind all this? You know, Rita, we've been watching this administration for three and a half years, and we've seen so many breaches of security, and I'll leave it at that, that this, to me, is is so, it's so egregious because these breaches seem to be getting worse and worse, and they're scary. Now, with the assem- a second attempt on President uh, Trump's life, I really feel that Americans, you know, are are getting this sense that everything's out of control. And I wonder, you know, I say to myself, look at the players that are involved. Alejandro Mayorkas, who I call the angel of death, he's making the decisions. Well, we know he's the one that said there was nothing wrong with the border. And you think of Anthony Blinken and all that happened and the loss of life in Afghanistan. And I really pray for this country every day. But Americans need to realize, and I heard one caller talk about, you know, we need to uh, make sure President Trump stays on track. No, we need to make sure that President Trump is safe. Because Newt Gingrich, the former speaker, said tonight, he said, you know, it's the Secret Service's responsibility to make sure he's safe. And this administration has been compromising, Rita, you know, as you cover so excellently. This administration has been compromising our security 24-7. It's something that's being compromised every day from like a China, little things flying around. It's just, and now we have a poster child for domestic terrorism who's been running around from Ukraine to all over the country terrorizing people, and he's not in on anyone's radar. You know, this is very, very scary. It but is. And you know what it makes me wonder? You know, maybe he was on their radar, but they just kind of chose to ignore it. I mean, how it, like to me, again, I kind of go back a little bit to everything with, you know, the Secret Service. Even in this case, it's like they're a lot smarter than that. You know, that's what's so shocking to me. It's like they're a lot better than that. They're a lot smarter than that. They're a lot sharper than that. And so it's like, how could they miss this? And and they surely have to know when you go around and say somebody's a threat to democracy and a major concern, guess what? You're going to incite the crazies. And that's what's happening. Um, and that's why this is so, so scary. Tony, great points. And I wouldn't trust my orcas either. He's been a disaster at the border, playing politics with the border, uh, endangering us with these open borders. And I would trust him with security. Heck no. Uh, And that's sad, but that is the reality uh, based on his own track record. Tony, thank you. Let's go to Mark in New York. Mark, your thoughts. Yes, thank you for taking my call. Uh, You know, I understand that normally an ex-president, you know, they're not accorded the full content contingency of the uh, Secret Service protection as a sitting president. But this is a very dumb 
they're, you know, extenuating circumstances. And I'm just wondering why they're splitting hairs at this point. And, and is it like, is it an ego thing for Biden? Like why he didn't give it to RFK or, you know, anything like that? I think like so. And, I uh, think so. I, I think it's actually more than an ego thing. I think it was a uh, strategic political reason, because why else would you not give an RFK Jr., last name Kennedy again, given the history of his father and uncle, and he blatantly refused to give it to him. Uh, at least Mayorkas didn't initiate it. He said his request went unanswered until just recently. This episode is brought to you by Buffalo Trace Distillery. Powerful yet smooth. Contained but never tame. Proudly going their own way, but never going alone. This is the spirit inside Buffalo Trace bourbon. Made at Buffalo Trace Distillery, the world's most award-winning distillery. Buffalo Trace is always perfectly untamed. Distilled, aged, and bottled by Buffalo Trace Distillery. Franklin County, Kentucky. 90 proof. 45% alcohol by volume. Learn more at buffalotracedistillery.com. Please drink responsibly. With the $5 meal deal at McDonald's, you pick a McDouble or a McChicken, then get a small fry, a small drink, and a four-piece McNuggets. That's a lot of McDonald's for not a lot of money. Price and participation may vary for a limited time only. Hi. Sorry. Did I startle you? When you're used to hearing a certain type of commercial, something like this can, well, take you by surprise. That's kind of how it is with the Lexus RX, a vehicle that has continued to defy expectations for over 25 years. From the first luxury vehicle of its kind, to the first hybrid luxury vehicle, to the only plug-in hybrid worthy of the RX name, we understand you want more than the everyday SUV. And isn't being understood an amazing feeling? Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. ABC Tonight. It's the premiere everyone is talking about. I'm Joan, and I'm your first Golden Bachelorette. Loves getting a second, second chance. When you're 61 years old, you have very few opportunities to change your life. I have to be ready. The Golden Bachelorette is proving romance never ages. I represent millions of people in their golden years looking for love. The Golden Bachelorette. I am ready to find the next great love of my life. Series premiere tonight on ABC and stream on Hulu. Rita Cosby is on. And everybody be sure to check out the big tunnel to Towers Foundation Walk Run. It is coming up on Sunday, September 29th. And all of us here at Red Apple Audio Networks are encouraging all of you awesome listeners to donate to our individual teams. That's right. You can go to walk.ritacosbyonline.com, click on my picture and donate. Help me raise a lot of money for this incredible mission. I love the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. You know how near and dear to me it is. Uh, let's raise as much money as you can give, whatever you can do, even if it's five, ten dollars, hundred dollars, whatever it is, everything makes an enormous difference. Help us honor our veterans, their families, first responders, and 9-11 victims. Go to walk.ritacosbyonline.com and whatever you can do, it is so deeply, deeply appreciated. And everybody, we're talking about this irresponsible rhetoric coming from the Democrats that just keeps on coming. Uh, Tim Waltz, by the way, uh, for people who out there are saying, oh, Kamala Harris doesn't have anything to do with this. I'm sorry. She had a chance today at the National Association of Black Journalists. And at that conference, they barely ever asked her about the assassination when they finally got to it, which was it felt like half hour, 40 minutes in. She said, you know, yeah, I called him and I said, you know, there's no place for political violence. Now, can we go back to uh, some of this hateful rhetoric of Trump? It was like, literally, she spent about 10 or 15 seconds, if that, and then moved on to bashing Trump. It shows that they do not care. And this is a concerted strategy, even if it is completely endangering President Trump. And kudos to him because he keeps on going. Tomorrow, he's having a huge rally in Nassau County, Long Island. That's going to be big. It's supposed to be at least 16,000 people fit in the arena. 
Uh, so it's going to be fascinating to see how many people show up. It's expected to be a packed crowd. Uh, and it speaks volumes of him that he's going there into blue, blue, blue New York and getting a lot of love, love, love like he did when he went to the Bronx rally not that long ago. And they don't want him anywhere. They want him to, like, stop campaigning. They want him to shut up. They would like him to drop out of the race. And Trump is saying his famous words, fight, fight, fight. He is not stopping. And he says he clearly sees the rhetoric against him, sadly, not stopping either. I never thought I would see such a sad day that one party concertedly would continue to spew hate against President Trump after not one, but two assassination attempts. That is stunning. And again, Kamala Harris is obviously egging all of this on. Here is Tim Waltz, her running mate. And listen to what he said. This is after the first assassination attempt. These guys are just weird. That's who they are. So it it isn't much else. Don't give them the power. Look, are they a threat to democracy? Yes. Are they going to take our rights away? Yes. Are they going to put people's lives in danger? Yes. Are they going to endanger the planet by not dealing with climate change? Yes. They're going to do all that. But don't lift these guys up like they're sometimes heroes. Everybody in this room knows. I know it as a teacher. A bully has no self-confidence. A bully has no strength. They have nothing. The fascists depend on fear. The fascists depend on us going back. But we're not afraid of weird people. That's unbelievable. That's when he started his weird campaign. And he's not the only one tied to Kamala Harris. Again, I mentioned her comments today, a concerted effort to attack Trump after a second assassination attempt. And the way she talked about, oh, I called him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let's move on. Who cares about that? Uh, It was really disconcerting. As an American, and it should concern Democrats, Republicans, independents, everybody. That speaks volumes. Also, by the way, Kamala Harris senior advisor, David Pluff, uh, who was very close to Obama, and he was a former advisor to then President Obama, um, and also is now on the Kamala Harris team, one of the top advisors. Uh, a couple of years ago, he posted this, uh, saying that it's time to exterminate President Trump, saying, quote, on his social media, it's not enough to simply beat Trump. He must be destroyed thoroughly. His kind must not rise again. Uh, that's like describing it like vermin. I mean, that is just an unbelievable statement from somebody who is now one of the top advisors to Kamala Harris. 1-800-848-9222. Uh, let's go to Denise. Denise, your reaction. Rita, we're in very, very dangerous territory. This administration, which is corrupt and cannot be trusted, have been trying to bring Trump down for years now and obviously made it very obvious that now with the inflammatory rhetoric, which incites violence, either with some crazies out there, groups, or do we know it's not coming from within? I mean, they will stop at nothing. And nobody needs a dictionary when it comes to the word eliminate. And I heard the press secretary today also. This is beyond comprehension as an American. And I am extremely, extremely concerned about Trump's safety. It's a long way off to the election. And I truly believe that they will stop at nothing. And I believe that Mr. Kaczynski said today, earlier today, that something doesn't pass the smell test. Yeah, and it doesn't. I agree with that. I agree with John, yeah, too. I yeah, agree with John yeah, Katsimatidis. I agree with him, too. And, you know, There's Denise? too many unanswered questions here. Yeah, there he are. Be given, yeah, too many answered questions, too much breakdown in the security of, of, of Trump. And an inflammatory rhetoric like this, when and do you ever remember anything like this in any kind of an election? This is beyond acceptance. This is threatening. I agree. This hold on. And Denise, Denise, life. Denise, hold on, because I 100 percent agree. I want to play for everybody because you touched on Corinne Jean-Pierre. I want to play that again, because, again, this is the press secretary of the president of the United States speaking on behalf of the White House, the Biden Harris White House. She was asked by you'll hear Peter Ducey, the Fox reporter, 
uh, you know, like, should we not say, is it, how is it okay to say he's a threat to democracy? Aren't you sort of, you know, stoking the flames? He's now had two assassination attempts and she doubled down. Listen to this. But to your point, there are people watching at home who might miss the part where you say, let's lower the temperature. And they're just, there are mentally unstable people who are attempting to kill political candidates, attempting to kill Donald Trump. And they are still hearing this we White have, House refer to him as have, a threat. Is there no have, concern that people we, are taking that we literally? Have, we're using examples. Uh, we're not just saying that just to say it. January 6th, Peter. January 6th. Wait, January 6th. How many times do we have to January 6, 2021? That is, a, that is a fact, what was reported, that happened on that day by some of your colleagues. I, I mean, and we have, at the same time, denounced political violence over and over, political rhetoric, over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over, but he's a threat to democracy. Uh, Denise, I am worried about him, too. And I, I never, you know, I thought, OK, one was really horrible. And I still think there's something that stinks about the first one, because the Secret Service is not that inept to miss the roof. And the guys hanging around all over the place. There's something still unanswered there. Um, and the FBI apparently has not been given all the information, giving it to uh, the congressional committee. Michael Walton and a number of others have gone on record saying they've been pleading with them and they haven't been getting it. So there's some interesting stuff there. That's one. Then two, um, now this one, uh, and this guy was like a blaring symbol all over the place. I mean, this is uh, this is really scary. And just as you said, there's a lot of campaign events between now and Election Day and um, and I do really fear for his safety. I really, really do. And that saddens me as an American. And it should sad everybody. Everybody who cares about freedom and cares about this country should really care and make sure that he and others are all well protected. Uh, let's go to Dan. Dan, your thoughts about all this. Yeah. So, hi, I wanted to make a couple of points about the shooter, how he was how uh, he was. He had a bunch of criminal charges against him, and still they didn't, he never served any time in jail. He had probation. He never served time in jail. So what do you make of that? So what I make of that is, is that what I think happened to him, I've heard from a police officer that that deals in uh, drug operations. A lot of times when they don't end up having charges that make them have served jail time it's because they made a deal with the guy and they made him an informant he said he's really sure he thinks he must have been made an inform an informant already backed by all his criminal charges all the way back to 2002 and that leads us further till when he went to ukraine he uh was arranging for people foreign passports to go to Ukraine. How is he doing that if not for the CIA helping him? Yeah, there's something interesting. Dan, you know what? I, I'm not ready to make that leap yet, but I will give you this, that there is something interesting. And apparently they were alerted about him. You just heard that from uh, John Solomon. What John Solomon, who's a great investigative journalist, we understand that the CIA was alerted. We understand Homeland Security was alerted. State Department was alerted. And why was he still allowed to kind of free, you know, freely travel to these foreign countries, uh, fly uh, when he had over 100 run ins with the law in North Carolina alone? And he also was living in Hawaii. So you wonder, what does he have over there, too? Uh, there's, there is something more to the story, Dan, and you might have your finger on it. Uh, who knows? You very well may know. Uh, let's go to Dave. Dave, your thoughts. Yeah, really, you don't have to be a secret agent to figure out that when Chuck Schumer told um, Rachel Maddow that the intelligence, intelligence community had six ways to Sunday to get in the evil with you, and they're pissed at uh, Trump. I mean, th there's too many coincidences for this to be coincidence. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah, I no, I no, I agree, and you're right. You you brought up a great point. I remember uh, when Schumer made that comment, 
And look, I mean, let's not forget, uh, remember the agents tied to the Russian dossier that turned out to be one big hoax. So uh, I sat, I hate to say that, but there definitely seems to be a number of bad apples there. Uh, Let's go to Larry. Larry, your thoughts. Yeah, I I think that previous caller had a very good point about it, about the Afghan connection and the CIA, because I think ultimately this thing's going to be solved when they realize that this world traveler who who didn't wasn't hunkered down in West Palm Beach like a like a local yokel, how uh, he that he found out about that golf game, not by guessing. Assassins don't guess. But he was tipped off uh, very late in the game and probably by somebody in the intelligence community. Now, in my opinion, this a lot of this points to Obama behind the scenes because he was as president. He was in touch with a lot of rogue agents, CIA agents. He's had people taken out and he has the most to lose if Trump comes in because he has to he'll have to get out of Washington. And that's exactly where he wants to be planted, because his whole social scene is dependent upon saying snide remarks. He and Michelle saying snide remarks about, oh, Trump this, Trump that. He's got nothing else to offer. So he'd have to get his ass out of Washington. He don't want to do that. OK, it's all points to Obama, if you ask me. Well, listen, uh, he clearly has been pulling the strings in terms of uh, getting rid of Joe. Remember, it was right after that fundraiser with George Clooney uh, that suddenly uh, Joe got the yank. Um, and apparently he and the Obamas uh, don't have a good relationship right now uh, because he knows he's behind him. Uh, you know, the whole effort to oust him. Uh, after 14 million people voted for him, too, nonetheless, Larry. So there are a lot of questions tonight. I'll definitely give you that. And who knows uh, what is going on there? I mean, he clearly seems to be uh, controlling the scenes because I don't think Kamala and Biden uh, are controlling anything right now, which is a scary place to be for America. And now, everybody, our support, our heroes. The Rita Cosby Show presents Support Our Heroes. And everybody, this is the Tunnel to Towers Foundation Support Our Heroes segment with a powerful story from Knoxville, Tennessee, where less than 1%, of course, of those who served in World War II are still alive. But in eastern Tennessee, one of those surviving veterans was honored just yesterday uh, with a beautiful tribute. Army veteran Dario Antonucci enlisted in 1942 to join the Army and served overseas in Burma as a radio operator and also an engineer. While in India, he helped make sure that the U.S. planes were traveling over the jungles and mountains safely, while also surviving on rations and overcoming malaria. The World War II veteran now lives in Knoxville, where, with the help of UT Medical Center this week, the facility helped orchestrate a ceremony to honor him. He was presented with an American flag, a special army pin, along with a certificate recognizing his service in the military. And also, by the way, he just recently celebrated his 100th birthday. How beautiful is that? And upon being recognized there at the medical center, he looked up and smiled and said, overall, I couldn't be more honored. What a beautiful, beautiful message. And bravo to, of course, all of the great members of the greatest generation. We love you. We appreciate you. And we love being able to honor you here on The Rita Cosby Show. And everybody, America's heroes need your help. Donate just $11 to the Great Tunnel to Towers Foundation. All it takes is $11 a month. Check them out at T2T.org. T, number two, T.org. You're listening to The Rita Cosby Show. This episode is brought to you by Batiste Dry Shampoo. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or getting ready for a night out, Batiste has a dry shampoo for you. Refresh with over 10 signature fragrances. Or try Batiste Hint of Color, a tinted dry shampoo that seamlessly blends with your hair. Need an extra boost? Try Batiste Dry Shampoo with added benefits, like volumizing, texturizing, and more. Buy Batiste now, in-store, or online at your nearest retailer. 
Ready to ring in the new semester? Pink's got A-plus styles for heading back to campus. Made for early morning classes, midday coffee runs, and late night study sessions. Their latest looks are everything you need to pass with flying colors. We're talking tanks that go with literally every fit. Parachute pants with a throwback 90s vibe. Plus cute sweaters, activewear, and so much more. Shop now at pink.com or get 15% off in pink stores with a valid student ID. Exclusions apply. This episode is sponsored by Tire Rack. Since 1979, TireRack.com has been helping people find the right tires for how, what, and where they drive. They sell only the best, like the full line of Falcon tires. Test results, ratings, and reviews are there to assist. Or try the Tire Decision Guide to get a personalized tire recommendation. Tires ship fast and free to you or to one of over 10,000 recommended installers. In many areas, they offer mobile tire installation that comes to your home or office. Shop Falcon Tires at TireRack.com. It's the Rita Cosby Show. And by the way, tomorrow night on the Rita Cosby Show, we will also be covering and bring updates about the big rally in Nassau County. Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman adding extra security, uh, figuring out traffic. They are expecting an enormous turnout. Nassau County, New York. Uh, and it is going to be in Uniondale, and it is expected to be a real biggie. Uh, U.S. Secret Service is going to handle security inside the arena, and there will be a whole bunch of security outside as well. Uh, and also, uh, there's where there may be some protests. It's going to be a little bit of a wild scene. Uh, and we'll, of course, have the latest for you tomorrow night on that. Meantime, uh, it is amazing the rhetoric that we continue to hear from the left. I say shame on Kamala Harris. Uh, the fact that today she was asked that question and here she is now the top of the ticket. And yet she is spewing this rhetoric, talking about Trump's hateful rhetoric right after two assassination attempts. It is reckless and it's dangerous and it's dangerous for America. One eight hundred eight four eight nine two two two. One eight hundred eight four eight nine two two two. Let's go to Stan. Stan, your thoughts. So it comes down to this, okay? There is a. I know what's coming because I've known it for weeks. It was going to come out of the this station. There is a conspiracy to kill Donald Trump. I knew it was coming. I heard it in your words sometimes, and some of the brain dead idiots like Larry and all the rest of these freaks that there is a conspiracy. To kill this guy. Oh, okay. I guess it's just coincidence, right? Oh, Stan? I knew it. Look, I said it weeks ago before most of this crap happened. So let's get it. Let's put it on the table right now. So you if, let, let, let stand. Hang on. No, go no, ahead, no. Hold on, Stan. I guess ahead. since you're the security expert of the world and, well, you, and you feel you're entitled to slam you the other it. callers, let me just ask you, Good, do you sure. honestly think that it's just a coincidence, these people? And, and by the way, I'm not willing to say it's a conspiracy. I am willing to say they've of been... Of course they've you been, are. They, Hang on. No, don't put words oh, in my mouth. You, Rita, don't put words, in, don't put mouth words in my mouth. What I think is there is a lot more to the story. You got the head of Secret Service praising Biden and praising Mayorkas for a job well done when almost every single agent has complained about the lack of support they've gotten. So we know the fact and we know the fiction. All right. And we have now Democrats who are riling up people to say this guy's a threat to democracy. And guess what? Looney Kazoonies, uh, even if you just believe they're just random Looney Kazoonies, they get encouraged by that. So they have a responsibility to clamp down on it, oh, and they're Rita, not. Please. And they're not. Don't you, give me this. Oh, Stan, that's ridiculous. Garbage, Stan, if this was a family member of yours, you would be going oh, crazy. Rita, you, you, and no, I would you expect you to be game. doing I that. I can play it with no, you. No, all no, the way. no, no, because you Let's do not play, you do okay, not okay, play ahead, ahead, with Rita. reality. Go you ahead. do not play with reality. We just had a presidential candidate have two attempted assassinations. And guess what? If it happened to Biden or Kamala Harris or someone else, the whole country should be outraged. It doesn't matter who. This is that is a threat to democracy, an attack on an American, an attack 
on a major candidate like that. Shame on you, Stan. Shame on you for calling out the other callers and not having enough guts. You are so caught up in your orange man bad, you can't see the truth.